just what does it mean that no one could buy or sell during the Great Tribulation unless they had the mark, name, or number of the beast? This is part 100 of the Revelation study. We've been working through Revelation. We're in Revelation 13, working on the Great Tribulation. When there's a beast, it's the Antichrist. And we also have a false prophet that makes an image, and that's the false Christian church. And we're going to look today at what it means that no one could buy or sell unless they had the mark, name, or number of the beast. So to understand buying and selling, we're going to look at Revelation, and we need to look at it in its symbolic sense. We need to compare Scripture with Scripture. We need to trust the Bible that the Bible explains itself. Jesus' words are spirit, and we're commanded to compare spirit with spirit. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit. And we look at the sum of God's word, because how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. We can't isolate just a part of Scripture. We have to take the time and put the work into studying the Bible. Okay, just a quick review of the false prophet. It's the leadership of the false Christian church during the Great Tribulation. It speaks like a dra dragon. It looks like a lamb because it's all full of deception, lies, false prophecy prophecy, false gospel, etc. And there's three things this false prophet does. It causes the earth, the people on the earth to worship the beast by deceiving with great signs and fire, fire from heaven, which we've looked at. They make an image of the beast, which we found was the church itself. It's the false church itself. And then now we're going to start looking at they, the, the, no one can buy or sell unless they have the mark, name, or number of the beast. And we need to understand in this video what it symbolically means to buy and sell. Please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. And let's move on in this study. Here is the passage. And this concerns the false prophet. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And we're going to look at that mark in the next video. And that no man might buy or sell save he that has the mark, the name, or the number of, of the, his name. And it's the number 666, of course. And we're going to look at those things in upcoming videos. And again, the false prophets, the leadership of the false Christian church. So let's move on now and, and look more at this thing about buying or selling. However, most people that study prophecy don't understand what buying and selling mean because they take it literally. Premillennialists typically say that it's going to be a time where you can't function. You can't buy things in a store. You're going to be, you're not going to be able to function in society. And they take it very literally. And they think there's a chip. The mark will be a chip or a piercing or some type of tattoo or whatever. And, and it, it, they have it wrong because they take it literally. Same thing with the name and the number of the beast. There's all type of wild speculations about the name. Who's the beast? Who's the beast? What's the number? Let's calculate the name and figure it out. All that's not right. And we're going to look at that. We have to recall that it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. And we have to search it out by comparing Scripture with Scripture. We don't take things literally when they're not to be taken literally. And we see in the book of Revelation all type of examples of symbolism. Right in Revelation 13, the beast is a leopard, seven heads, ten horns, feet like bear, lion's mouth. That's, that's not literal, that's symbolic language. Same thing with the false prophet, the lamb with two horns, speaks like a dragon. Do dragons speak? It, it, it's all symbolic. Fire from heaven is symbolic. It's judgment. Image of the beast is symbolic. And we saw that that actually points to the false Christian church. Similarly, buy or sell is symbolic. Mark is symbolic. Name and number are also symbolic. We have to compare scripture with scripture when we approach the book of Revelation. Okay, so the symbolic meanings of buy or sell in the Bible, and it's worth a study on this, and we have more information on this on our website, therockofoffense.com, but we see related terms in the Bible about buying or selling. We see the words buy, sell, redeem literally means to buy out of the market, ransom, the marketplace, gain, to have gain or profit or loss. There's all type of terms related to money in the Bible. And unfortunately, some ministries just try to overly literalize all that and make a ministry out of just trying to teach people about financial matters. 
But all those things in the Bible have symbolic meaning to them. For example, salvation, to redeem, which means to literally to buy out of the slave market of sin, it points to salvation, redemption. We obtain spiritual truth by buying, quote-unquote buying, not with money. Money can't buy, but we buy it. By wis- we buy wisdom, knowledge, and the treasures of knowing Christ. False teaching in the church is referred to as merchandising people. The commitment to discipleship is, is to be sold out or sell all and follow Christ. So we're going to look at these things and try to get in our minds that buying or selling has a spiritual meaning and what that is. Okay, first, redemption. It's the Greek word ex agorazo. Ex means to take out of. Agorazo means to buy at the marketplace. And that word buy is what's in Revelation 13, 16. To buy or sell. It's to buy at the marketplace. And we see in Galatians 4, when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem. Ex agorazo. To buy out of the marketplace. We were bought out of the marketplace of, in slavery to sin. We were bought out of that. And we might receive adoption as sons. So that's a, it, the marketplace symbolically re- represents a place of spiritual transaction. It's a place that one can be saved. It's a place where one can share uh, ideas about what the Bible teaches. It's a marketplace. Okay, buying. We see in the a very famous verse, Ho, everyone that thirsts, Come ye to the waters, and, and he that has no money, this is not literal money, come ye buy and eat. You don't buy with money, though. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for which satisfies not. And that's symbolic. It's a, the spiritual meaning is to buy, come, come to Christ and buy. And we're, of course, we're drawn by God to, to, to come to Christ. And again, the spiritual meaning is not literal. It, buying, it points to obtaining the great treasures of spiritual truth of God. Uh, earnestly desire the, the milk of the word of God. It, it, it has to do with symbolic meaning. And again, our website has a lot more details and examples of this. But let's move on in this study. Okay, buy spiritual things. Here's some very straightforward passages. Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth. Buy truth. Buy the, the word of the milk of God. You don't buy it with money, though. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. Those are the things that we should spend our resources, our time, our effort on, instead of worrying about the merchandise of the world. Revelation 3.18, I, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. And that's the faith that you may be rich in white raiment, that thou may be clothed, and, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eyes of that you may see. But again, to buy gold. And the only people that will buy spiritual truth are people that God has saved. God does the drawing. And then we want to spend all our, our time and all our resources on knowing God. And that's what it means to buy. It, but it's we don't buy salvation. But first we become saved by the gracious, elective, sovereign, by grace alone work of God. But then we spend all our resources because we want to learn more and more about God. And we want to be a faithful servant of God and help other people and share with other people. Colossians 2, Christ in whom are hid all the wisdom the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, that's the treasure we want. That's what we want to buy. We want to buy that gold, the treasures of the wisdom and knowledge of Christ. We also see the symbolism of selling. Christians are to be sold out for Christ. We're saved by grace. We're drawn by God. But once we're there, our focus is not on the material things to buy the material things of this world and get richer and richer and richer. We need just enough to survive, to, to live someplace to, and to have food and, and shelter. Luke 12, 33, sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heaven that fails not. We want to buy that, that treasure in heaven. But it, it's done after we're a Christian. We give all our time and our resources to f- pursue that. Luke 18, 22, sell all thou hast and distribute to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. The priority is not on the materialism and the God of this world and and focusing on gods and idols of this world. It's on following Christ and buying spiritual things, the treasures of the wisdom of knowing Christ. 
we see an example of this, and this is a symbol in the book of Acts. It literally occurred, but the church, the first kernel of the church, sold all, and they gave it to the apostles. Let's read the pa passage in Acts 4. Neither was there anyone that lacked. So they had enough to survive. They had what they needed. But as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. The apostles were the leaders of the church. They were the ones that were going to write the New Testament. And distribution was made to everyone according that he had need. But we see, so that's the ideal. And that can't happen today, of course, because of sin and because of the condition of the church. It's impossible. But we see Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their possession, but they kept back some of the money. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to, to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? And Ananias heard and these things fell down and gave up the spear, which is a symbol that he wasn't a Christian, that he really wasn't sold out for Christ. So we see that the idea again about selling all, buying and selling, has to do with spiritual transaction, it has to do with our priority on the word of God, serving others and sharing. And we see another very impactful example of this thing about buying and selling in the church or in the temple. Jesus, on two different occasions in his ministry, uh, drove out the money changers, drove out those who were buying and selling the temple. John chapter 2, he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers sitting. They were sitting at tables, buying and selling things right in the temple. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, which is a symbol that these people were not part of the church. They were not God's people. They did not have salvation and overthrew the tables, the tables of the money changers. It's where they did business, and they, were, they thought they were doing spiritual business by selling people things that they could sacrifice with. So they, they were spiritually merchandising, but it was error. It was false teaching. And sending it to them that Saul does take these things hence and make not my fa father's house a house of merchandise, buying and selling. And that's what the false Christian church of the Great Tribulation will become. It's all about wrong teaching, wrong ideas about salvation, wrong prophecy, lies, deception. And people are going to follow and they're going to buy this stuff. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Similarly, in Matthew 21, Jesus went into the temple of God. Again, this symbol of the church cast out all them that sold and bought. Those people that are falsely merchandised. It's the false buying and the false selling. And overthrew the tables of the money changers and seats of them sold doves. And said unto them, it is written, my house should be called the house of prayer. The, 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 the church, the collection should be prayer. It should be communicating with God. Buying spiritual things. Buying the truth. Not buying material things. Not making worldly sacrifices. But it's about buying and selling spiritual things. Instead, it becomes a den of thieves. Okay, so finally we see that merchandising is actually a symbol for false teaching in the church. There's people that want to take advantage of others. There were false prophets also among the people. Even so, there would be false teachers among you who secretly should bring in damnable heresies. These are the false teachers. It's, it's the same thing that happens in the Great Tribulation, the false prophet. The false teachers, the lies and deceptions. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth, which is the Bible, shall be evil spoken of, blasphemed. The Bible's not important anymore. Jesus as pr prophet, priest, and king isn't that important. And through covetousness shall they with feigned or fake or false words make merchandise of you. That's what they do. They come, the false teachers come into the church and they make merchandise because they have a different gospel to sell. They have a different truth to sell. It's the truth of psychology. It's the truth of lies. It's the truth of, of all type of other wrong beliefs about the Bible, false prophecy. We also see Babylon, Revelation 17 and 18, which we're going to get to in later videos. All nations drank the wrath of her fornication. The kings of earth have committed fornication with her. Fornication, spiritual fornication, is the worship of other gods and idols. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The false Christian church makes people rich, but they're selling things that are false. 
Okay, let's relate this back now to Revelation 13 about buying and selling. So true Christians cannot buy and sell in the end time false Christian church. And practically that means that you can no longer buy the truth from the church because the truth isn't there. It's full of lies and deceptions. It's full of false gospels and false prophecy and watered down things, worshiping of gods and idols. And Christians cannot be sold out. They cannot sell all and trust the church because of all the wickedness that is going on. So it's, it's a difficult, and that's why it's called the Great Tribulation. Christians can no longer rely on the church for support, nor can they believe the things that they hear in the church. They can't trust. They have to go to the Bible, compare Scripture and Scripture, and learn it for themselves. Okay, just a quick summary. So we know the false prophet is the leadership of the false Christian church. And in that false Christian church, which is the image of the beast, you can only buy and sell if you're aligned with the beast. And you'll be aligned with the beast if you receive that symbolic mark, that symbolic name, or symbolic number, which we're going to look at in the next three videos. A good way to summarize this, buying and selling is a spiritual marketplace. But Christians can no longer buy or sell because they can't trust the church for the, tr the right truth, for spiritual truth. And they can't, they can't buy or sell all because they, they can't trust the church for true fellowship because it's worldly. It, it's got worldliness. Is, that's Babylon. It's the fornication. The spiritual fornication has overrun the church. Christians can no longer buy or sell because they have not received the mark the name or the number of the beast, which is all about worldliness, working for salvation, which we're going to look at all that in the next three videos. The next video, part 101, what is the mark of the beast? Let's resolve that. Uh, please consider subscribing to this channel, and thank you very much for watching this video.